Good afternoon, everyone. This is Farmerism Pro, and I am here for my part. JR, uh, my ID is JRN1904190. So, globalization is defined as the growing in the interdependence of countries worldwide through the increasing volume and variety of cross border transactions in goods and services and involves international capital flows and through the more rapid and widespread diffusion of technology. In contrast, globalization is a term that invented in order to emphasize that the globalization of a product is more likely to succeed when product of service is adapted specifically to locality or culture it is marketed in. The increasing presence of McDonald's worldwide is an example of globalization while the changes in the menus of the restaurant chain that are designed to appeal to local tastes are an example of globalization so the globalization aims at the worldwide intra secure division of labor in this strategy activities are established in many <clears throat> sites uh, spread over the world based on the country's comparative advantages a manufacturer determined for the globalization aims to secure the supply of its inputs by locating production of these inputs at the most favorable location. Thus, the labor-intensive production of components will be situated in low-wage areas while the production of high-tech and high-value-added products will require a skipped with a skilled and or well-educated workforce in a European context the European context this would mean located uh, locating research facilities in a core areas and assembly plants in outer areas Globalization aims to establish a geographically concentrated interfirm division of labor in the three main trading blocks such as Japan, South and Southeast Asia, the USA and the Europe. The co collectively, these are known as the triad. Manufacturers striving for globalization are building their comparative advantage on close interaction with suppli uh, suppliers and uh, dealers as well as the, with other relevant actors such as banks and governments. A man once says a t-shirt tell a story of globalization. He was not exaggerating. Now, let us talk about how we got here. By the end of the 18th century, Great Britain had started to dominate the world through the establishment of British Empire and the innovation of technologies. Britain became the top manufacturing nation as the products were in demand all over the world. As a colonial empire, Britain was not the only beneficiary. The growing demands of raw materials pushes the empire to import machines and build transportation in its colonies. On the contrary, the empires and the nation were not colonized by the Western power who would need to adapt to the industrial and global tr trends independently. Swiss Canal was located in Egypt. Opened in 1869, Swiss Canal was a crucial waterway as it had significantly shortened the distance between Europe and Asia. The invention of steamships and telecommunication shortened our distance and increased our communications. Besides, the use of steamships and other machines caused a historic drop in the trade costs. According to Baldwin, globalization 1.0 had almost no international organization. From an economic perspective, global trade grew significantly and the global export rate increases. The World War II had a disastrous effect in the world, but not in the United States. The US economy grew steadily during the wartime, and only some military bases and Hawaii fell were physically damaged. Hence, the minimal damage allowed the Americans to focus more on economic development. Bretton Woods system and agreement was implemented in July 1944, and it further solidified the US status as a superpower. Bretton Woods Agreement was actually an effective foreign exchange system to prevent competition of the evaluation of currencies and promote international economic growth. It minimizes the violation of currency exchange rate 
and replacing the gold standards with US dollar as the global currency. The system also said the US is the only country who are able to print money without causing inflation. The Bretton Woods system helped establish the World Bank and the International Monetary Bank. It is a crucial impact. It caused a crucial impact in rebuilding the European nations, as, for example, the members of Bretton Woods system could adjust their currency values to rebuild after a war. However, the system collapsed in 1973. After the World War, the European recovered, and between the post-war and the year 2000, the European GDP tripled. It was reported that the beginning of the new economy, new global economy occurred under the leadership of the United States and the technologies in the second industrial revolution. Free trade opened up nations and removed barriers to do business. Eliminating or rolling tariffs and duties contribute to lower prices and more product choices. More importantly, it helps global economic growth. However, the system has downsides as well. For example, the exports are cheaper and more appeal appealing than the local products. Thus, the domestic business suffers. Another example is that you job outsourcing for lower production costs and higher profit. Globalization 2.0 was also when the rise of political globalization reaches its peak. Many intergovernmental organizations were formed, such as the United Nations, World Bank, and World Trade Organizations. Under these organizations, the transnational cooperative is formed based on the rules and rights that are enforced through a combination of financial and immoral incentive. As Utopia as they mentioned, intergovernmental organization can be exploited as well. For example, the US has been dumping turkey tails to Samoa, causing 93% of Samoa to be overweight or obese. In 2007, the Samoa tried to ban the turkey tails. However, with United States influence in the World Trade Organization, WTO blocked Samoa's application until it lifted the ban of Turkey Tail's import. After the World War II, the world was divided into two major powers, the Western Bloc and the Eastern Bloc. The US and the Soviet Union tried to extend their influence across the globe by deploying cultural propaganda and military force. Some of the countries, from a geopolitical perspective, were directly influenced by the major power, which is why there was a rise in communist countries. The competition between the US and Soviet Union escalated from promoting the ideology to technology. Both competed to conquer space. In 1961, the Non-Alliant Movement, NAM, was established to maintain the country's neutral and independence between two major political powers. In 1991, the USSR dissolved Mark the end of Cold War. Now we're heading to globalization 3.0. Thomas Friedman said, It began since year 2000 when the internet started to popularize. He said, Globalization shrank the world from size small to a size tiny. He also talked about how supply chain can be done in domestic and overseas using the internet. The internet changed the way we do business. And it certainly benefited the company and the consumers. It's easier for companies to communicate with their business partners. Herman said the era of this globalization was also globalization of individual because each has to think about how to fit inside the global supply chain. As an individual, he said, the more educated you need to be, the more you need to perfect skills that are not fungible, that are not easily replaceable by man or machines. The use of internet among businesses has contributed to the international economy. Also, Corporations between to outsource overseas. For instance, you need electronic components to make iPhone, and they are all from four different factories or even different countries. Consequently, the global trade accounted for 50% of the world GDP in the beginning of the 21st century. The majority of the population globally had moved to the middle class. On the other hand, free trade problem continues to this era. Usually, Companies that outsource their production lines, pay low wages, and provide poor working conditions for the workers. Globalization continues with the advancement of technologies and more complicated international policies. Many experts and analysts foresee the technology is aided with fourth industrial revolution. Internet of Things, artificial intelligence are going to impact the economy, especially the free sectors. It's cost saving for firms. 
but not ordinary workers. People fear that more jobs will be replaced with robots, machines, and computers shortly, creating more unemployment. This challenge puts millions of service sectors, workers, and professionals at risk. The internet has made the online transaction easy, as well as e-commerce. E-commerce was created in Globalization 3.0, and now it is a norm globally. E-commerce is estimated to generate over US dollar of 700 billion globally. Its expansion further benefits the packaging, food and beverage industry, and the transport. China's size skyrocket economy probably is the most interesting historical event. After the China reform economy, China welcomed foreign investments, developed private business while privileged the state-owned firms. Despite facing a financial crisis in 2008, China was successfully recovered, and today, China became the second economy powerhouse. In 2019, China's GDP was 14 trillion US dollars. Globalization may be a new term for many people, but it is not a new phenomenon. The word global was modeled from Japanese the word dochakuka. It was originally meant the agricultural principle of adopting one's farming technique into local conditions, but it also adopted in the Japanese business. Well, global localization, a global outlook adapted to local conditions. Two terms, global and globalization, became popular during the 1980s, primarily in business sector. Multinational companies now have practiced how to be in global for many years. Take McDonald's as an example. McDonald's is famous for launching different menus for different countries. It has also achieved a balance between being a global brand and have a local approach. McDonald's serves menus that adapt to local flavors and local culture. For example, a teriyaki burgers in Japan, vegetables, McNugget in India. It has its quality assurance team that are responsible for managing the quality of all products, including Hello menus in the Islamic countries. McDonald's hiring higher locals and franchise its ventures among the local entrepreneurs. Their prices in different countries are varied. The food making process of the McDonald's is standardized. Instead of searching the supply chain to fulfill its requirement, McDonald's set up its own factory. So now let us talk about the second example, MTV. MTV is an American cable channel. In the 21st century, they have set their business to the East Asian market. What they do, first of all, they need to localize the MTV. The content must appeal to the local. Second, they need to understand the local audience. MTV Korea. 60% of uh, the musics are local popular music. The majority of the shows are locally produced because they have a very mature production skills. While in China, China is quite diverse. They have some local Chinese music performance and the foreign TV programs, especially the Taiwanese music and TV shows. They also import the other Asian music, Japanese, Koreans, and Singaporeans. US and Singaporean shows were counted for over 15% of the total programming. And the last, they were hired the local stuff, especially the presenters. Why? Because audience are very sensitive to the presenters, cultural proximity. And 86% of the program hosts in MTV Korea's. Thanks for Yunyo's presentation. I'm Hong Tao. For my part, I will put the dilemma and the solution together. From the perspective of the de development of the globalization, global globalization involves various aspects, economy, culture, society, politics, and others. From the current point of view, the development of the globalization has advantages and disadvantages. Many aspects have encountered difficulties. First one is anti-globalization tied under the economical globalization. Number two is the national nihilism under the cultural globalization. Number three is the social problems caused by the political globalization. But before that, I want to make a point. This is false opinion. It is wrong that globalization has ended. Because globalization is a historical process. The entire human rights from the industrial society to the modern 
uh, to the modernization is a process of the continuous global inter integration. And the biggest feature of the industrial society is that the raw material resource of all countries in the world are located to each other. You have the minerals, I have the industry, you have the agricultural products, I have the market, and then everyone can exchange. But after World War II, global, global integration was featured, divided by the globalization of the resources in the industry, Chin represented by the multinational companies. If a product have, uh, has a hundred parts of each part, uh, each part, allows the world's best to do this kind of parts, they, they will have the good quality efficiency low cost a company to do. Number four, the globalization has gradually come to the, his, the horizontal division of the labor and the vertical integration to achieve the optimal resource location, low cost and high efficiency. Low cost company to do, it, mean, it means is that we, will, uh, we still have no divide, divide the work, but our business can be gathered together so that we can save the transportation cost. Those are all dropped by the industries and uh, efficiency, not by the will of the chief and uh, populism. So the globalization is formed under the constraints of the input, output, resource allocations and the cost effect e effectiveness under the guidelines and the drive by the market rules. And now the volition of the executives and the in interest of the nation. Now I will introduce the first the dilemma. This, uh, this idea may be spreading. Next, let me talk about it. Why the United States has become an important promoter of the country globalization? Since, uh, since 20 17, a new round of the anti-globalization has inten intensified and uh, this time the, un the U.S. has become an important driver of the anti-globalization. There are three specific man uh, manifestations. Uh, the first one is since Trump take office, the, the U.S. has begun to withdraw from many international organizations and uh, multiple monetary international agreements, such as the pair agreement. And this disrupted the rule based the liberty international order all but published by the US after the World War II. Second, second one is the, from the beginning of 2018, the, the US launched the, to a trade war against China and other countries. In addition to China, the US has launched a trade war against his friends, such as the European Union and the Canada. The trend war has caused a several blow to the global multi the global trade and the investment system and has had a huge negative impact on the world economy. The third one is the US gradually strengthened the importance of wars, depended the most anti immigration tendency and uh, stir up the nation, nationalist and uh, populist uh, sentiments. Trump's post for the construction of the separation will on the border between the United States and uh, Moscow. He continued to ex em emphasize the growth of the America first, which in turn fact the, the the most big nation, nationality sentiment. This has the weakened, um, weakened the influence of the globalization, globalism that has long dominated the U.S. Anything happened for some reasons. My my point of view is divided into the demo stick and the fringe regions. In the 1980s, the new liberal trade of the sort gradually offends the economic politics of the U.S. and uh, other Western countries. With the goal of the maxim maximizing the interest of shareholder American companies during the manufacturing industry and have the hollowing of the manufacturing industry. Other 
um, developing country have the well developed industry in this transfer of the manufacturing. Although the U.S. has the technology, it is difficult to mass products this product uh, local uh, locally. So Trump has repeatedly uh, called the man uh, manufacturing industry return to U.S. But this is difficult. The process, um, the price of the American labor is expensive. Besides, the U.S. permission of the anti globalization also respond to the prior blow by the domestic social social production movement to a certain extent. An excessively open market economy will damage some the weakly so weakly competitive. This works and the companies are important force again companies globalization. On the other hand, for the foreign uh, for the international reason, the U.S. is feeling more and more pressure on the external uh, security. The U.S. has been under pressure from other countries at all the stage of its history, such as the uh, Soviet, Soviet Union, Jap Japan in the 1980s, and, uh, and now the China. So free and open economic system is established by the U.S. after World War II not only brought many benefits to itself, but also brings communists to the development of the other countries. Now that the U.S. lead to the world is disappearing, it must break the system it has established. The anti-globalization of economy will have a bad effect on the world economy, and it's not good to the global cooperation. So we should be done something. We must we must establish a fair, orderly, mutually benefic, uh, beneficial and win-win world economical system and uh, monetary system. The basic principle of the Belt and Road initiative is join if you like, and uh, we will don't force you if you don't like this. It is maybe the possible solution. Then the second dilemma, the national nationalism under the cultural globalization. Economically, a country needs to integrate into globalization. It is necessary to learn from each other culturally, but to maintain the cultural character of the nation, developed countries have advantage in science and technology, so you will be influenced by their culture in technology products such as Google. So nationalism ignores national culture and the difference and uh, dancing national culture, tra um, traditions and uh, historical uh, heritage. Look at look at this picture. This picture is about the China in the 1970s when the Chinese people lacked the spiritual uh, beliefs. Western freedom and uh, democratic idea in ideas in China, China, the Chinese people abandoned the rich culture's belief in the history and began to fall respects Western series. This is dangerous for a country. Look at the Swiss Union. It was uh, originally a very powerful country in the world, but after the peaceful evolution in the Western Russia, in the West, uh, Russia's economy now is uh, as much as uh, the Chinese Guangdong's province because culture can only learn from each other, not replace it. China has a history of thousands of years with a rich history and culture. Well, learn, learning, learning other cultures, believe in your culture. For the possible solution, it is uh, take its extensions and remove its draws. Learn what truth you will in other culture and uh, discard what, what doesn't should your culture need to learn from each other. Be culturally confident. For the third dilemma is the social problems caused by the political globalization. Since the Jasmine Re revolution broke out in the 20th on and the December 17, 2010, the people of some are uh, Arab countries have taken to the streets, demanding the action to the overthrow their alterations again and uh, 
Optimistically, the French is a needle is, is about to be born as the prospect of this mo moment. At, at that time, the Western media claimed uh, to bring um, democracy and freedom to Arab country. However, now we can say that it has been war in the society. House has been destroyed and the uh, social order has been uh, chaotic and the people have to leave their country. If the struggle can bring up the change, that is good. But um, but what we see is bad change. For this um, possible solution, it is it is uh, Professor Zhang Weiwei give a new idea. Good governance and bad governance with democracy and the autocracy. Let's watch a video of them. Uh, when you talk about this uncertainty about the power in the West, it indeed has to do with the shift of power in the world from the West to the rest, notably China. And uh, if you talk about the uh, power in terms of soft power and hard power, what you see is clearly what I call a shift, a paradigm shift from the so-called democracy versus autocracy to good governance versus good bad governance. That's what China advocates. Good governance can take form a Western political system. There are some cases, not always. Good governance can also take the form of non-Western political system. Chinese is an example where many problems, but overwhelmingly speaking, it's far more positive than negative. Likewise, bad governance can take the form of the Western political system. This is crucial. I can give you 100 examples. And then bad governance, of course, can also take the non-Western political system. Behind this is a shifting hard power from our state and calculation and from also study of certain international organizations. China is already the largest economy in terms of purchasing power parity. We have created the world's largest middle class. We export most for a reason than other countries, even combined. We have created largest property class. Most Chinese have properties. We have created the world's largest foreign exchange reserve. Of course, these are economic powers which can have influence. And this reminds me of you know, my debate with Professor Fukuyama, the author of The End of History exactly six years and a half ago, when Egyptian spring occurred. He said to a large audience, you know, China may also experience Arab spring. I said, no chance. I said, on the other hand, be aware, I think Arab spring will become Arab winter. I checked, I may be the first intellectual in the world to make this comment. I was with Brussels think tanks last year. I said, if only European Brussels could hit to the, with my Chinese modesty, our humble advice. You could have avoided this terrible refugee crisis. 1.5 million people a year, refugees, escape from broken homeland to Europe. We could have avoided real meaning of democracy, real democracy. But unfortunately, so far what we see, as shown in Arab Spring, about one person, one vote, a multi-party system, that's at the best procedural democracy. That's not necessarily the real democracy. Real democracy is far more important, as you said, about education, about many other important ideals. In terms of China, you know, uh, let me quote from everybody knows Confucius. <laughs> yeah. And he said, uh, people are like water. Regime or leaders are like boat. Water can carry the boat, can also overturn the boat. So if you look at the China model in particular, the key message is stay in touch with your people. It's so easy. You can go to Africa. Don't go there with your brilliant ideas. I respect your preference. It's understandable. But you do some surveys. What are they care about most? Yeah, what, what, what Fighting poverty, fighting disease, street security, safety, etc. Job creation. You do this accordingly. One, two, three. Four. Finally, I um, draw a conclusion. I give four conclusions. The first one is economical globalization is is irreversible, but economic globalization is a double ended sword. Face challenges and meet op opportunities. And meet opportunities. Second one is cultural globalization also brings opportunity and challenges. Must have the cultural confidence and learn spreads. Politics, politics cannot be globalized. The establishment of the political system of any country must be based on its own national conditions. There is a currently no universal political system. That's all about our group's presentation. 
Thank you, ma'am and uh, my classmates.